Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Classic Wrestling Cast, where we go in-depth on classic wrestling. Today is our WrestleMania prediction show, and joining me, as always, is Aaron Steinberg from the Comic Book Show. How you doing? You know, Mike, this this is usually the season where I'm pumped for professional wrestling. I'm excited. It's WrestleMania, but I'm not feeling it this year. I'm not feeling it because, honestly... Well, we'll talk about it, but you know that's how I feel about wrestling. Personally, I'm doing uh, I'm doing pretty well. How are you doing? Uh, pretty good. Uh, good. Yeah, I feel the same way. Kind of. There's a few matches that I'm excited to see, or I would like to, like that are like pretty big matches, but the rest of them are kind of um, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure they'll they'll be good matches, but they're not. I'm not super excited about a lot of them. Yeah, and you know, I'll tell you like the main thing that happened for me um, to kind of that made me lose interest in this WrestleMania is number one. Getting Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar number three. Like to me, they they haven't had a good match. They had a match in like what was it? Oh five. It was two thousand four. I think it was like 2000... WrestleMania twenty. But both of them were leaving like right yeah. afterwards, so the match was pretty bad. It was it was bad. Then they had a squash match when he came back. Then they had the stuff at the Rumble. So now they're going for round three, and I'm not excited about that. Um, but that's the second part. Of, of what I mean, I'm just seen. hoping this this next match or the the run at WrestleMania is actually a match and not a squash match. Yeah, I don't I don't have um I don't really have high hopes for that though. I think it's going to be a squash. But the main thing that that really irks me is that you had two guys who since the brand split carried their brand. You had AJ Styles who was carrying SmackDown on his back week in and week out. He was the absolute highlight of SmackDown. Well, him and The Miz, but, um, you know, AJ Styles, uh, I think, was to a greater extent just because he was the WWE champion. So you had this guy just week in, week out, pay-per-view after pay-per-view, putting on these incredible performances, working incredible programs, match of the year with frickin' John Cena. Yeah, from Royal Rumble, I think. Yeah, and... What happens now? He's going into WrestleMania, not the champion, like or what? not in or not in the championship match. They had, yeah, they could have got and, him into that match pretty easily, but then um, they had, I think it was it like he lost and then was like eliminated from getting in there, and that's when that storyline with Shane started. Was when yeah. he's like, I deserve to be in here, and then he attacked Shane, and then Daniel Bryan fired him, like Kayfabe fired him. And then Shane challenged him to a match, and he accepted it. I think it'll still be an interesting match, but I think he should he should be in the world title picture for yeah. sure. And then on the Raw side of things, you've got Kevin Owens, who similarly was carrying the entire Raw brand on his back. And I'll say, in an in a greater extent to, or it was more impressive than what was AJ than what AJ Styles was doing, because. Yes, AJ Styles was a huge part of what made SmackDown so entertaining, but by and large, everything else on SmackDown was pretty good. On Raw, though, Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho were the only entertaining things on Raw. There was no other good stuff happening on Raw, and Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho made Raw watchable with their segments. And now... Kevin Owens is not going into WrestleMania as the champion. He's like, to me, that championship match at WrestleMania should have been Kevin Owens versus Chris Jericho for the universal championship. Like there's no, in my opinion, there's no reason it should have been any other match. So, um, you know, that those are some of the reasons why I'm not really excited from a story perspective, but from an in-ring perspective, um, we should have some pretty good matches, and also, you know how I love predicting uh, uh, pay-per-view results. It's one of my favorite things to do, so what do you say we get into it? All right, sounds good. So I think we're going to start off with the Andre the Giant Battle Royal, because it's kind of, I guess anybody could really win. Um, I have a couple people I think that might win, but my prediction probably is probably Braun Strowman. I don't know if he if he'll win, but I think he's got a good sh- a good shot at winning. Yeah, I mean they use they use this typically to like highlight the big men. Um, you know, yeah, they big had... show won like not last year, but like two years ago. Um, Cesaro won the year before that, and he's he's not really a big man, but um, you know, you you had uh, Big Show 
then Baron Corbin won it. Um, so yeah, you were 100% right. It makes a lot of sense for, um, oh, geez, what's his name? Brown, Str- <laughs> Brown Strowman. Yeah. It makes a bunch of sense for Brown Strowman to win. Um, just because he is a big guy and he has been in the upper part of the card and he's not, he's literally not doing anything else. So that it kind of makes sense, um, for him to win this. Yeah. Cause I don't think it's worth like really like worth like delving too deep into like the possibilities of who might win. I mean, that's just my, my shot. I thought uh, who was it? Damian Sandow from like two years ago would have been a better shot to win, but they ended up having it be Big Show. But yeah, and you know, honestly, like, does it even matter who wins? Because uh, not really. They they never go on to do anything. I mean, you could say that uh, Baron Corbin, you know, used it to his advantage on SmackDown, and he's been doing really well there. Uh, but I would say it's been more his um, the promos he's been cutting on Talking Smack than it was his Battle Royal one that kind of have uh, put him, you know, into the spotlight and have made people realize, like, yeah, the guy is good. He can talk. He can put on a good match. I don't think the the Andre the Giant Battle Royal had really anything to do with that except maybe give him the platform to show his skills. But even after he won it, like, he went on to that feud with Dolph Ziggler that ended up really going nowhere. They just traded victories in and out. Um, and he so went yeah. on to fight like to battle with like Kalisto for a while. Yeah, he so... was there. And then um, two or uh, three years ago, Cesaro won it, and he didn't really nothing really came of him out like out after winning it. I think like he more of like on his own got over even without ha- even if he didn't win that, he probably would have still been in the same spot. Yeah, because they paired Although... him paired him with Paul Heyman, and then that didn't really go anywhere either. Yeah, that that didn't that really just that was bad. That was bad because they were trying to make him into this heel, but you know people want to cheer him, and it just didn't. It was like the opposite of what they were doing with uh, with Roman Reigns. But anyways, yeah, I think your prediction is really good, and I'm gonna go with that. Brown Strowman for the Underage Zion Memorial Battle Royal. All right, sounds good. Um, we'll go into the SmackDown Women's Championship max, match next. So it looks like we have Alexa Bliss, the the, the champion. Versus Becky Lynch versus Natalia versus Mickey James versus Carmella Carmella with James Ellsworth versus Naomi, which is a six pack challenge. I forgot how these worked exactly. I think that just means it's a like they didn't you know they have Fatal Four Way and I think they do Fatal Five Way, but there's nothing that starts with S for six way, so they just call it a six pack challenge. I think it's just basically a Fatal Four Way with two extra people. Okay, well. We'll move into uh, that match. Let me see. Get back to everything here. All right. So we have Alexa Bliss as a champion. Um, I'm not sure. She's had the belt for a while. I can see. I can see her retaining. I can also see Becky Lynch winning it back. I don't know if I see any any of the other people winning. I mean, Naomi had it and then dropped it really quickly. So I think she's a contender. Yeah. This is this is one where I think. Um, I think pretty much everybody but Natalia and Carmella have a legitimate shot at winning. I could see a. Alexa Bliss retaining. I could see Mickey James winning. I could see Becky Lynch. I could see Naomi winning. Um, I think James. I think with Carmella, James Ellsworth will kind of get in there and mess things up for Carmella. I don't know if this is an elimination match or just a uh, whoever gets the first pinfall or not. Um, no, because the the Bailey ver the Raw Women's Championship is a elimination match. So this one probably isn't. Right. Um, you know, I, I think it would be really, I think Becky Lynch. Yeah, I'm going with that as well. Um, the, the one thing, if they're doing it where it's just like a six person match where whoever gets a pinfall or submission first wins first, I think this is going to be a very short match actually. Yeah. Or not very short, but I don't think they're going to get enough time to really like showcase much. I think it's going to be some, somebody's going to hit something and get a pin and that's going to be it. Yeah. Well also with six people in the ring, like there, to me, that's just too much. Um, you know, I, I, t- I prefer, I, to me, a triple threat is as like high as I prefer to go for number of people in a match. Yes, there have been good fatal four way matches, but, um, you know, you, we all know the basic formula for a fatal four way, two people get in the ring, do their stuff. They get knocked out. You know, they take a nap on the, you know, on, on the side of the ring. Then, uh, you know, two other people go in, get their stuff. Then they do the, the big, the tower of doom spot in the corner where, one person power bombs two people who suplexes another person. They all follow 
very similar similar formula. So I think you're right. And I think the fact that it's on the pre-show, the fact that it is six people, um, and also the fact that it's SmackDown and and uh, you know Vince McMahon ha- has historically shown a preference for Raw. I think they're they're going to get shafted a little bit in terms of time. Um, yeah, but I the think reason- they maybe. I, I don't think they get more than ten minutes. I think they maybe get like eight minutes, maybe. Yeah, I, I, the reason I, I think I think Becky Lynch is going to win, um, because a lot of times WrestleManias are face heavy events, because you know WrestleMania WrestleMania is seen as like the culmination of feuds, right? And usually at the culmination of a feud, the the good guy comes out on top a lot, you know. So I think that um i think that becky lynch will win this one it would be an awesome moment for her i think she deserves it although um i could see alexa bliss retaining too but i think becky lynch is probably more of a shoe in for me all right sounds good we're going to move into our next match for the cruiserweight championship which is i'm kind of disappointed this is a pre-show match as well but it's uh, neville versus austin aries and it's for like again for the cruiserweight championship yeah. Um, um, again, I'm kind of. I'm really. I don't. I think it might be too soon to take the belt off Neville, but I'm. I don't know who's gonna win this, but I'm pretty sure it'll be a really good match. Oh, I. Yeah, this is gonna be a fantastic match. I don't think it's gonna be a match of the night just because, you know, we've got some contenders in there that we're gonna talk about. Also, um, I don't think it has the t- like. If it's a pre-show match, I don't think they're gonna give it time to be match of the night either. Yeah. I mean, uh, I think you're going to get out of all of these matches. Well, the Battle Royal might be, like, the longest, but I think they're going to get more time than the women's match. But I don't think it's going to be enough time to really, like, put on. If this, if this was, like, on the main card, I think it would get enough time, but it probably won't get enough time in the pre-show. Yeah. I don't I don't think they're going to get, the. you know, I think, like, if you could, you could give Neville and Austin Aries 20 minutes and they will make a classic. I don't think they get more than 10, though. Um, I think they probably get, just like you said for the other match, 8 minutes, 8 to 10 minutes is probably um, the the upper limit for how much time they're going to get. Um, just like you said, I think it's way too soon to take the belt off Neville because when you look at the cruiserweight division, honestly, Neville is the best one they have in terms of in-ring ability and in terms of being a character and just like cultivating a personality and um, a- and having an edge. None of the other people in the cruiserweight division really like make me say, hey, I got to watch this guy. I want to know what's going on with his story. Whereas with Neville, like I want to know what he does because he's got this mean streak going on and it's really fun to watch. So um, I think it's way too early, just like you said. I think it's way too early to take the – to take the belt off him. Um, Austin Aries could be a credible champion. He's got that personality. Um, but I think Neville is just, I don't think he's done doing everything that he could do with the belt yet. Yeah. I'm but, thinking Neville, Neville retains maybe even if it is some kind of, um, like retains through, uh, like cheating or something like that, like hitting, I mean, not disqualification, but like maybe like holding the tights or something like that. Some kind of heelish way to win. He could do that as well. Yeah, which would make sense. Although I like what they're doing where they're not they're not giving him the Seth Rollins treatment. You know, uh, when you if you remember when Seth Rollins was champion. God, that seems like ages ago, by the way. Yeah, it was oh, it like man. almost. I mean, it would be two years ago that he won it. Oh, gosh. OK, but, uh, well, anyways, when when he was champion, like he was not winning matches in legitimate ways. He was always cheating. He was always running away. Or always I, having uh, his security team come in and, like, you know, distract people and that kind of thing. Right. So what I like that they're doing with Neville is, like, they're giving him legitimate victories. Um, so I think they're building him up to not be, um, you know, the typical, like, cowardly heel. They're making him a dominant heel, um, which is something you don't see very often in WWE programming. Pretty much all heels are like cowardly heels, um, so it's exciting to see them book him the way they have been. Um, so yeah, I think it's just way too early to take the belt off him. All right, sounds good. 
see where we want to go next here because now we're in kind of the main card. I think we can I would, go I would from say, the bottom to the top. Doesn't I don't think it matters really. Yeah. Also, by the way, I just noticed the SmackDown Tag Team Championship uh, titles are not on the line in on WrestleMania. Yeah, I mean, before they moved SmackDown to Tuesday or to Tuesdays, it would be they would always have like a last minute SmackDown match, and that isn't on here for some reason. That's kind of interesting. I don't know if there's like a feud going on or not going on, so maybe that's why they didn't include it. Like, hey, you, you know our SmackDown tag team champions? Uh, we have to kick them so we can have room for John Cena and Nikki Bella versus The Miz and Maurice. Or for uh, The Rock to come out and do a 30-minute promo. Oh, God, where he just lights his name on fire. I was there last year at WrestleMania, and I was... Because at that point, we had been there for so long, and it was just so boring. That was not a good I mean, segment. I don't know how long. It felt like half an hour. It may have been shorter, but I don't exactly remember. It was – It was the whole segment lasted about 20 minutes, if I recall correctly. Okay, which I think flashback to last year was time that they could have used for the Dean Ambrose and Brock Lesnar match, which was um, – I think would have been better if they just had more time. But Yeah. Anyway, so uh, which match did you want to go to next Um then? Yeah, let's go. Uh, let's go with the. Let's do the. Okay, so let's just start with thirteen. All right. Uh, L- Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson versus Enzo, Big Cass, and Cesaro and Sheamus in a ladder match. All right. So yeah, I knew this was going to be a triple threat, and then I think they added the ladder match stipulation fairly recently. Yeah. Uh, this could be pretty interesting. Um, I have no. Idea. I'm not really sure who wins. I think if it's face heavy, you go with Enzo and Cass. Yeah, I think they got to give the victory to Enzo and Cass. Like, the pop that will erupt if Enzo and Big Cass win, like, they will have the – that will be the reaction of the evening. I just – I think they got to give it to Enzo and Big Cass, right? Like, how long – I would think Enzo... so. I mean, um, they could give it to Cesaro and Sheamus, and that would probably get a pretty decent reaction, but I think Enzo and Cass would probably get a better reaction – and it would give them their WrestleMania mo- – because they haven't been at WrestleMania yet. So they debuted, I think, last year the day after WrestleMania. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this will be their first time in WrestleMania, so I think – or at WrestleMania. So I think giving them the title would be pretty good. You can also do something silly like have maybe um, – I think it was Big E did it one time. Some, like somebody was climbing a ladder on Big E's shoulder, so maybe you have you have um, Enzo holding up like Enzo on his shoulders to get to the la- – to the titles or something yeah uh, i don't know well let me tell you my uh theory mike it has been rumored that the hardy boys have signed back with wwe and seeing as how this is a ladder match to me it makes perfect sense for them to um to return at this point so i think it would be awesome if um if the Hardys returned and kind of, you know, uh, well, you know, you wouldn't really want them to feud against Enzo Amore and Big Cass. So I could see them helping Enzo and Big Cass win because if the Hardy boys came back, they would like the, they would be faces 100%, 100,000%. Um, so I could see them going up against Gallows and Anderson. So maybe they come back, cause some chicanery, Enzo and Big Cass get the win. At, and literally blow the roof off of whatever arena they're going to be in because well, I don't I'm think telling the, you, man, I don't think the arena has a roof, but if it had one, it would be blown off. Yeah, because if Enzo and Big Cass win at WrestleMania, like WrestleMania is Smark Town USA, and if Enzo and Big Cass won there, it like it would just be a massive reaction, uh, and one that I'm very looking forward, very much looking forward to. Yeah, I think it would be cool. So I'm going with them as well. So Enzo and Big Cass winning this ladder match with possible Hardys coming in to doing something, or maybe even coming out like after the match to kind of like confront Enzo and Cass, being like, hey, you guys won that ladder match, but we made, made these matches famous kind of thing. Yeah. I don't know if okay. they would do that, but that would be cool. It would be awesome. It would be great, especially if they if Matt was still doing his broken Matt Hardy gimmick. It would be great. All right, so we're going to move up to uh, Dean Ambrose versus Baron Corbin for the Intercontinental Championship. And I've seen bits and pieces of this feud, and it looks pretty. It could be pretty good. I think the match is going to be. Well, it's going to be a brutal match for sure. Yeah, Baron or brutal Corbin, as far as like how it goes. If it's like, I mean, it'll at least look brutal. I think. 
Yeah. Baron Corbin is a lot better than a lot of people give him credit for, I think. Um, I haven't seen a lot of this feud too much just because school started up and I've got a new baby, so I haven't really been able to watch as much wrestling. Yeah, I haven't, um, I've haven't. i only been watching, like, YouTube clips and stuff like that. I haven't – I think I missed the last pay-per-view due to work and a few other things. Um, Fastlane I missed, and then Fastlane was – overall, I think it was just, like, pretty disappointing. Yeah, um, for sure. So, you know, here's here's what I'm thinking with this match. It's a conundrum because Dean Ambrose and Baron Corbin are two people who deserve, I think, to be in the main event scene. Um, but the problem is, and I think this is across all of WWE right now, is that their roster is too deep. They have more people than they have room for in terms of, like, well, maybe not time because, you know, they have a three-hour Raw show. You can fill that. Um, but they have more people than they really know how to deal with. So Dean Ambrose, he deserves to be in the main event scene. Baron Corbin, in my opinion, should at least, at the very least, be at the high mid-card. Like the higher end of the mid-card, low main event. Um, and when you have a match with two people like this... You know, one person's got to go up, one person's got to go down. If Baron Corbin loses, he can't then logically challenge for the the championship of the the WWE championship. But then again, Dean Ambrose loses. What does he do? He's a former WWE champion. This is what his second, maybe third Intercontinental title reign. Uh, possibly, I think so. I think he didn't he beat Ziggler or the Miz. I think at one point. Yeah, he's he's a multi-time intercontinental champion. So for me, like the the pickle here is where do where do these people go in the hierarchy if you know if either one of them wins? Okay, Baron Corbin wins. He's the intercontinental champion. That's awesome. He deserves it. I think him taking a step up would be great. But then what happens to Dean Ambrose? Yeah, I, I, th know. I think here. Um... If you're just going off of, like, popularity and, like, who can take a loss better or, like, you know, like, be less damaged, I think Dean Ambrose can, like, will take less damage from losing. Yeah. And Baron Corbin will kind of just be stuck where he is if he loses. So I'm probably going to – I would predict Baron Corbin to win because you can still have Dean Ambrose's momentum not really be affected as badly as Baron Corbin's. Yeah, I agree with you. I think Corbin is going to win, and I think it would probably be smarter for him – to win because you you look at a WrestleMania like this, and I see Shane McMahon, I see Triple H, I see The Undertaker, I see Goldberg and Brock Lesnar. These are all people who are part time, so they have such a stacked roster. And you can even they're... maybe say the same thing about Jericho because I don't because his con he's not he's not he he's somewhat part time but not as part time as like the other people. Yeah, so, where they pull him in for if they pull in Jericho, they usually do it for like a long time or a big bigger period of time. Undertaker shows up for like two months and then is out. Yeah, so you you got all these people, and you like you got a, a WWE roster that is so stacked, yet they're still bringing in part timers because they are having trouble building stars. I think they give the belt to the Intercontinental Championship belt to Baron Corbin, build him up. Like, they need to start building stars because they're not doing it. And that's the problem I have with friggin' the main event of WrestleMania uh, for the SmackDown World Championship. It's just that, that a lot of these people lack star power. You know, I think back to, to the Attitude Era. I've got a, a piece of art hanging on my wall. It's the Mount Rushmore of the Attitude Era. It's a really cool art piece. And it's got Stone Cold, Triple H, Mick Foley, and The Rock. These were all four megastars who were all wrestling at the same time period. I can't think of a single person right now who is on that level, save for AJ Styles. He is the only person that I feel is like a, on that superstar level. And it's because WWE doesn't really build new stars. I suppose, so I, think, I suppose you could put Cena in that group, but he is okay, he's yeah, wrestling yeah, yeah. he's wrestling less and less now as well. So 
yeah, he's he's in his twilight years. Um, you know, his, his career is starting to dwindle down. Um, and I mean, he you still, know, I, still puts on good matches, but they're, he's putting them on like much less frequently than he than he used to. Yeah, so I think like take take this time, start to build up a new a new guy, build up Baron Corbin because I think you're right. You give the loss to Baron Corbin, you know, he, he's just spinning his wheels and like. You with with superstars in the WWE, you have to strike while while the iron is hot because the fans, WWE fans, are fickle people. We will be, you know, cheering and rooting our lungs out for one guy on one week, and then the next week we'll be booing him to Kingdom Come for, you know, small reasons. So I think that we got to Baron Corbin is doing really well right now. Give him the belt. Let him run rough shot over the SmackDown roster and start to and that was a really a really long way of me saying, I agree with you, Mike. Baron Corbin should win. I'm sorry I went on that tangent. No, you're fine. All right, yeah, so okay. we're gonna go Baron with Baron Corbin on that one. Next up we have uh yeah, John Cena and Nikki Bella versus the Miz and Maurice, which I think I'm probably just gonna say like Cena and Nikki are gonna win, but this feud, or at least the Miz is part of this feud, has been awesome. Oh, yeah. I, I, I mean, saw... to, no pun intended, I should say. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> but uh, there was the promo he did on um, Talking Smack, which was amazing, where it was like, you know, I'm here day in, day out. Cena went and did this. Cena is, like, doing all this other stuff. And then he did um, an impersonation of Cena talking to oh, yeah. Nikki, which was really great as well. Yeah. The, where it was the... like a takeoff on Total Divas, Total Bellas, whatever it would be. And he's like... He's like, I have a proposal for you. And she's like, oh, what is it? He's like, I want you to get your, I propose you take your feet off the table because it's in page 55 of this contract you signed or whatever it is. Yeah, uh, it was, I forget what it was called, but yeah, they, they did a spoof of Total Bellas and it was just, it was amazing. But, you know, this is, we've been saying this for how long on this show that The Miz is amazing and deserves more than what he's getting. And it's amazing that like what they're giving him, he's actually, he's turning into like gold on SmackDown right now. Yeah, absolutely. It's like, oh, you're gonna work. You're you're gonna work with John Cena. He's like, I've worked with Cena before, but let's like, I I don't know if he's coming up with all this on his own. I wouldn't be surprised, but it's just really, it's like grade A like heel material. Yeah, the Miz is, I would say, in the whole of WWE right now, that Miz is the best on the mic out of active wrestlers. So not counting Paul Heyman. Um, I think the Miz is the number one heel in the company. And I'm going to disagree with you, Mike. I'm going to say the Miz wins. He beats John Cena. And then, dude, I, like, I don't know how long I can say, oh, the Miz going into the main event scene. Miz going to be the WWE champion. Like, eventually, if I say it enough, eventually it has to happen. All right, cool. So, yeah, I like that we have this split thing. I'm kind of going with the if you don't bet on bet against Cena attitude that we've kind of adopted here, and um, I like that you're going with the Miz. I could, I would actually much rather see the Miz win, but I'm kind of thinking it's probably going to. I'm thinking it's going to be Cena just because you know it's John Cena, and it's WrestleMania. Yeah, but I would much rather to prefer the Miz to win actually, or Maurice. I mean, I don't know how who's going to get the pin. Or, and I, I'm guessing it's WWE mixed tag style where it's like, um, this will tag in Maurice, and then John Cena's not going to fight Maurice. He's going to have Nikki. He's going to tag Nikki. And so it's still going to be like Cena versus the Miz or Maurice versus Nikki. I don't think it's going to be any of It's not going to be like Cena versus Maurice or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. They're going to, um, they're going to just do men versus men and women versus women. But, Probably. You know, uh, I just, like I said, if I keep saying it, eventually it's going to happen. So I think the Miz is going to win and then we'll move up into the championship. And just because I have this mental image of the Miz holding the WWE championship on one arm and having Maurice in on the other arm. And like, it just looks so magnificent to me. And I just think it's got to happen. And then he could also just rub it in Daniel Bryan's face when he does as well. Oh, absolutely. I mean, like, that is like it's like I know that's like a sub feud between this feud where he's like always talking to like Daniel Bryan about he's like I've been here like doing this this and this like you were like wrestling in front of like bingo halls and all that and now you can't even work anymore that kind of thing 
yeah, like the material, it just writes itself. Like it's all just there. They just have to put the Miz in a position to where he can use it. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm going with the Miz. I'm, you know, like you said, we have our our little never bet against John Cena thing here, and by and large, that is correct. But this time, I'm going against what my gut and what my brain tell me, because right. I'm going with what my heart wants. Sounds that's good. The Miz. All right, cool. I got that down for. Um, I'm going with Cena. You're going with uh with the Miz. Moving into our next match, we have Chris Jericho versus Kevin Owens for the United States Championship. Which, um, um, I don't know. I think I see Kevin Owens winning, just because I think Kevin Owens should probably have a title, even if it is a like a step down from the world title. I still think it'll be a really good match, though. Yeah, yeah, I think for sure Kevin Owens wins um, because you know you get an opportunity here to to show Kevin Owens being brutal. You get an opportunity to show him kicking butt, which is something we haven't seen from him in a while because, just like I said before, WWE tends to make their heels look like uh, they're scared and they're cowards. And that's not, you know, you look at the type of person Kevin Owens was in NXT, that character worked really well, and then he comes to WWE and they more or less just flip the script and make him an entirely different different person. Um, so I think you give Kevin Owens the opportunity here to be brutal, to be that, uh, you know, that type of guy that has no emotion. He's just, he, nothing gets in the way of him and his, and his gold. And then he'll be um, able to get pretty much get revenge on Jericho for essentially screwing him out of the world title. I mean, I suppose like, even if they had a match Goldberg, like an actual legitimate match, Goldberg still could have possibly won, but it was Jericho's distraction that caused him to get speared and then lose the match. Yeah. So I, I think you're right. Kevin Owens has to win. And also because like, you know, Jericho's no spring chicken. You know, I think eventually he's, he, he knows what he's there to do, which right now is put over the young guys, help build stars. And I'm not going to go into another 10 minute tangent about building stars, but you know, I, I think Kevin Owens realizes kind of not Kevin Owens, uh, Chris Jericho realizes kind of what his role is and what he's there to do. Um, and I think he's a smart enough guy to where he'll do that and he will put over Kevin Owens. And, um, you know, because I, you know, there I've heard rumors that, you know, he his his uh, time is up after WrestleMania. It would make sense. He takes a little break, goes on tour with his band, whatever the case may be. Um, but I, I think it would to have Kevin Owens win would be, would be a good cap on this story of as much as we love Chris Jericho, don't cross Kevin Owens. And that gives him an edge that he sorely needs. And it also um, will allow him to like more showcase the Kevin Owens from NXT than the Kevin Owens that they have been presenting lately. Yes, absolutely. All right, so Kevin Owens there. Moving into our women's championship match on the Raw side, we have Bailey the champion versus Charlotte versus Sasha Banks versus Nia Jax. Um, I had said earlier before we started recording that I think Bailey should have, they should have at least waited until WrestleMania to give Bailey the belt. And I believe you said they should have waited even longer, but I don't know who I see winning this match. I kind of don't want to see Bailey retain because I would rather see uh, what I would rather see is it come down. It's an elimination match. So I'd rather see it come down to Sasha and Bailey and just have Sasha turn heel. I don't know. Yeah, I think Sasha has to turn to heel. Like, ugh. how long are they going to make Sasha Banks squander and and kind of just be in this role that she's not good at? I mean, month after, after month, you and I have gotten on this show and we've said this face persona is not working for Sasha Banks. It's just not. She calls herself the boss, but nothing she does really says that like her, her mouth says it but her actions don't say it like she's just a crony or you know a, a a buddy at this point she's just kind of there like you know bumping elbows with bailey and like oh yeah we're gonna do things so i think what's gonna happen what i hope is gonna happen is that sasha does the heel turn crosses bailey turns on her eliminates her and then we can have Charlotte versus um, Sasha Banks 
and Sasha wins. I think Sasha comes out with the victory here. Um, but I think she's going to screw Bailey somehow. Yeah. Or even if it's just beating Bailey, like with like a cheap, like cheap shot or something like that, just yeah. something to set up either like start a, a heel turn or just do a heel turn right then and there. So yeah. I'm going with Sasha as well. So next up we have Shane McMahon versus AJ Styles. So this pretty much came out of the fact that Shane McMahon or AJ was eliminated from getting a spot at WrestleMania and attacked Shane in like because he was like pissed off. Yeah. And then Daniel Bryan and Kayfabe fired AJ Styles, but Shane McMahon was like, "No, I'm gonna I want to fight him at WrestleMania," and AJ accepted it. Yeah, great. It's been a good, uh, good storytelling, great feud here. And one thing is, and like. I kind of wish Shane would would have learned this from last year. When you do the elbow drop, wouldn't it be easier to have um, AJ, or in this case, AJ, last year, the Undertaker, on the side of the ring closest to the ring post you're jumping off of? Yeah. He, he, like, barely even hit, he barely hit the Undertaker. He, like, his, like, hand, like, maybe touched the Undertaker. And this year, when he did it to, to AJ, it was the same thing. But um, as much as I would rather have seen AJ in a title sh- title picture, I think this could be, this is going to be a pretty interesting match. It's going to be pretty fun to watch. Yeah. um, My only concern about it is when we think of all of the like really good matches that Shane McMahon has been in. And let me tell you, like, I don't even have to tell you, we all know the matches Shane McMahon has been in are legendary. Um, They've correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure all of them, if not, or most of them, if not all of them, have been hardcore type matches. Hell uh, in pretty cell. much. There was like a street fight with with um, Kurt Angle, where I don't remember if it was like considered a hardcore match, but it was basically like I don't think it was a false count anywhere. But it's the one where he got suplexed through like the plate glass window thing. There was that. Yeah. There was a street fight with Vince McMahon. I think that was like the same year, like at the WrestleMania before that was King of the Ring. So that was WrestleMania that year. Then there was the Hell in a Cell match, which is essentially anything goes with inside the, the Hell in a Cell anyway. So I don't know if this... Yeah, there's no stipulation on here. It just says it's a singles match. Yeah. Um, so if Shane can't, like, bring in, like, the garbage can to do, like, the coast-to-coast spot, or if he, I suppose he could do it and get disqualified, but... Yeah, that, that's the thing that I'm thinking of, is, like, if you take away that that uh, hardcore element, you take away being able to do things out of the ring, like, does that handicap a Shane McMahon match? I think it might. Um, uh, it that, might, and, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's, like, a last-minute change to the match where it's, like, all of a sudden it's no disqualification or something like that. Yeah, and, and also I, I am confident that AJ Styles could, you know, carry a broomstick to a five-star match. So um, I think it'll be good but I don't think it will be as good as it could have been um, if it's not given a uh, a stipulation. I think if this match is given an, a, uh, a stipulation, yeah, this is going to be quite possibly the match of the night. Uh, I think if, the ma- if it's not given a stipulation, I think it will kind of hamstring what they're able to do a little bit, but I think it'll still be a very good match. Um, and I do 100% see AJ Styles winning. Yeah, same here. I think what's going to happen is AJ will probably win, and then maybe Shane McMahon will be like, I like underestimated you or something like that. Like maybe, like, And then maybe put him in more title matches or something like that. Yeah. I don't know exactly how it'll go, but I think there will probably be like a last-minute stipulation or somebody will get disqualified and Daniel Bryan will be like, no, this is a – like they did it when um, Shane and Stephanie took over – um, Raw and SmackDown, and basically they came out with stipulations like mid-match where it'd be like, okay, now this is a hardcore match, or now this is a Fatal 4, or a whatever the stipulations were. Uh, they may change those on the fly, but I wouldn't be surprised if the announcer, if they announced something like, right when the match happens, be like, okay, this is a hardcore match now. Yeah. Um, but I'm going with AJ as well, I think. That's what we're going with. Yeah, he's got oh, yeah. to. Yeah, go ahead. What were you going to say? Uh, I, I'm. I was gonna say that I think that like they could do a mid-match thing, but um, I'm not a huge fan of of that you know way of making it. I think I think maybe on Saturday, 
just you know putting out a Twitter thing. Hey, this match now to be a uh, you know a no disqualification match. I think that would be good. But uh, yeah, AJ Styles to win, and you know it's gonna be it's gonna be a good match. All right, cool. So after that, we're moving up to Seth Rollins versus Triple H, which is a non-sanctioned match. So, uh, what does that what does that mean? Oh, I mean, like I know what non-sanctioned means, but in it's terms of a, what a wrestling match is, what does that mean? I have no idea. I think it just means that it's just like, is it like a street fight then? If it's not sanctioned, do they get an official for it? Like the weird thing with like non-sanctioned matches, if it's not sanctioned, why is it even on the card? Kind of thing. Yeah, it doesn't. But, re- I would. I would rather them have just said it's a no disqualification match or it's a street fight, something less dubious than. I think no, it also means it's match. it's not an official match. So if Seth Rollins does win, it doesn't count as a loss against Triple H. I'm not really sure. Oh, that's a good point because we all know Triple H is petty like that, and he will, you know, he'll take those things into account. Um, to me, this is the match I'm most looking forward to because I am super invested in the character of Seth Rollins and in Triple H. Like this is this whole thing has been brewing since Seth Rollins turned on the Shield, right? Because yeah. like as soon as that happened and he aligned himself with Triple H, I'm like, okay, that's not going to end well for Seth Rollins. Yeah, this because- has been a if you take into account like the couple months like it took to um, get out of the Shield, like it was like the pay per view or two after WrestleMania, this has been an almost a three year build. I mean, he was out for a while with injuries as well, but you can still, it still works as far as the story goes. Yeah. So like you know, as soon as he uh, allied himself with Triple H, like the the wheels in my head just started spinning. Like, oh god, I don't know when it's gonna happen, but you know. Triple H is out for nobody but himself. It, and this is in terms of character, obviously. You know, Triple H doesn't care about anybody but himself. So one day in the future, Seth Rollins is going to be on the opposite side of that equation where he's going to get screwed, and it's going to be glorious. And now it has happened, and it is glorious. Their segment on Raw was so good. Um, it was the best part of Raw. It was really the only good part of Raw. Um yeah, my and one concern I, is ha, is how like hurt is Rollins still? I think he can still put on a good match. I think they're kind of. I hope at least that they're kind of just like kayfabe milking the injury that the injury is like gone at this point, and they're just and he's just like selling the injury like it's still there. Yeah, I think they have to be because the guy like tore five ligaments in his knee or you know whatever happened. Like that's pretty serious. Then he came back and shortly thereafter re-injured it again. Not to the same extent, you know, it was more minor, but still. So I think, like, they are 1,000% sure that he is he is ready to, uh, to go. So, you know, if I were WWE, I would not put him in a, in a match unless I was certain that he was healthy. So I, don't, I think it's got to be a work. I, I hope so. And with that being yeah. said, I think it would be... Um, I have to go, even though with him being injured, I think it'd be a great WrestleMania moment to have him like beat Triple H like with one bad knee still. Yeah. I, so I'm going, with, I'm going with Rollins on this one. I, I agree with you. I think this is going to be, you know, we all thought we saw the coronation of Seth Rollins at WrestleMania 31 where he beat Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns in the same match. I think, I think this is going to be a similar moment um, where it is the coronation of face Seth Rollins. If I hope will. so. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be a really good match. I wouldn't. Um, I don't know if Dean Ambrose or Roman Reigns are going to get involved or try to get involved. I, and that would be interesting, but I still think that's a little too soon. Especially if like Roman Reigns is like feuding with the Undertaker, is he going to have time to come out and help Seth Rollins? I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I don't see them getting involved um, at this point, at least. But I just, like, you know, this this match is a story, like you said, it's three years in the making. And I'm just, man, I'm really excited um, that we're getting this culmination. Um, and I think it's going to be a really, really good match. Triple H, one of the greatest of all time. Uh, Seth Rollins, one of the greatest in the current generation. So I think, like, there's no doubt that this match is going to be fantastic. Um, so, yeah. 
I think Seth Rollins wins um, and hopefully gets a massive pop because, like, honestly, the energy around Seth Rollins has been a little lackluster, lackluster because, remember, he came back and was still a heel when he when he came back from injury. It came back last summer. He, he attacked Roman Reigns, but then the, and people cheered him probably more or less because he just attacked Roman Reigns, not because it was – well, I mean, it's probably a combination of – being like, okay, Seth Rollins is back, but also he attacked the guy we don't like. And then yeah. the next night, he was like, basically just like... Dissing the crowd. Again, yeah, so... So that really, I think that really hampered a lot of his momentum, like coming back as a heel when the whole universe wanted to cheer him. Like, that was that was just weird. Yeah. Um, so... And then he kind of started becoming more like face-friendly when he was feuding with... Um, Kevin Owens, and then eventually, as soon as this this feud started up again with Triple H, like he got injured like the next night or after the Rumble because Samoa Joe came out and like attacked him, and that's I think when the injury happened. Yeah. So and then um, he's been like I'm I'm glad they're putting him in. So I don't think they would have put him in a match if they weren't sure he would be able to like work work the match. I agree, and I'm, I'm, um, I'm glad it's against Triple H because Triple H will at least know like is like he's a veteran. He can be like okay. I won't be doing any of these moves on him because like, or like he knows how to protect Seth Rollins and make sure he doesn't get like re-injured. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Seth Rollins gonna win 100%. All right. Next up, do you want to go to the, uh, Undertaker match or do you want to do the title matches first? Uh, yeah, let's do Undertaker. We'll hit the title matches last. Sorry. Right. My baby is screaming in the background. If oh, you you're can fine. Hear that. All right. Uh, yeah, so let's do the Undertaker. We have the Undertaker versus Roman Reigns. Uh, I don't know. Like, I think there's going to be a lot of people really, really pissed if Roman Reigns wins. But if they're really trying to build Roman Reigns as, like, it would be a perfect opp- opportunity for the Roman Reigns heel turn if he does beat Undertaker. Yeah, so before we started recording, you said that you had some, uh, let's say you, you said you had some misgivings about this match. Why don't you tell me about, like, you know, what you're thinking about it? Uh, like I said, I don't, like, I'm thinking if... Reigns wins, people are just going to be, even if it does build to something better, people are just going to be, like, super pissed off. Like, if you thought the Royal Rumble from, like, two years ago was bad, <laughs> I think this is going to be even worse. Yeah, but, you know... But, with... I, I don't know. I mean, I like Roman Reigns as a wrestler. I just wish they would do more with him as a character. Like, he's, yeah, he's, so... he's, not, he's not a bad wrestler at all. Like, I think he's no. pretty good. No, a lot of people give him a lot more, you know, crap than he deserves as a wrestler. But, you know, what, what I'm thinking is, and, and you make a good point. He got booed, you know, uh, to hell and back at the Royal Rumble 20, I think it was 2015. Um, but there, they were saying, hey, cheer him. Look, The Rock is out here. Cheer him. Roman Reigns is a face. But now, I th- and you're right, if, if Roman Reigns beats The Undertaker and more or less retires him, then... Yeah, he's gonna get absolutely destroyed uh, in terms of being booed. He's just gonna get ripped apart. But I think that that would have to be a calculated move on the WWE's part. Like they have to know that if he is the one to retire the Undertaker, like that is heel turn. Like that is what it is. There is no other. To me, in my opinion, there is no other way to spin that. Like he can't do this and, and, and again my in my opinion he can't do this he can't come out at wrestlemania beat the undertaker more or less retire him i think he's this is the undertaker's final one um and then come out tomorrow and start feuding against a heel acting all like cool hand luke like yeah baby girl i'm roman reigns you uh you know the odds are all against me but i stand up against the odds like he can't do that no. I feel like I if, mean if I he... think if they do like have him win, they have to just like basically like WWE like the creative behind WWE has to like commit to like you're a heel now, start doing heel stuff. Even if yeah. you even if you're a heel that doesn't have to cheat to win or anything like that, you're just like beating people. You have to you have to be a heel. You can't just like you said you can't have him beat the Undertaker and then next night on Raw challenge be like i want to try the world title against whoever the champion might be if it's a heel or heel or not yeah and you know i've seen interviews where people are saying 
Well, everybody's booing him. Roman Reigns is a heel. And, well, yeah, that may be true, but there's some dissonance in there because, well, yes, if people are booing him, then, you know, sure, that I guess that could make him a heel. But he's doing face things. He's acting like a face. He's being the good guy. So he's doing good guy things, yet being booed. And there's, like, a really awkward, like I said, dissonance in there. So I think if they commit... To him being a heel. They commit to him being a bad guy. I think like there's a lot of mileage to be had there. And, you know, Stone Cold says this a lot on his podcast. He's got to have a good heel run before people will accept him with the face, as a face. And I think that's really true. I think let... Because heels always get to show more personality than faces. Like, it's just... Faces these days are typically bland characters. With the exception just, of maybe somebody like The Rock or something, but yeah. for the most well, part, yeah, it's like The Miz, if he was a heel, wouldn't be, or if he was a face, he wouldn't be getting away with doing, like, his awesome promos. Yeah, yeah. Heels just get to do a lot more in terms of character. So I think let Roman Reigns be heel. Let him explore his character. Um, and, I, and I think eventually people will just start to cheer him. You know, because he, I think he can be very much like the silent badass guy. He just comes in, kicks ass, and leaves. Um, and I think there's there's something to that. So I think I think Roman Reigns is going to win here. That is my prediction. I'm going bold. All right. Well, I'm, I'm saying Roman Reigns is winning and retiring the Undertaker. Reigns, and for you, I'm going with the Undertaker. But I'm also going to build in a little or add in a little thing that can still satisfy a heel turn. Even with the Undertaker winning. So let's say Undertaker wins, like barely wins kind of thing. Um, Undertaker's like getting out of the ring, like getting ready to walk up the ramp, and Roman Reigns being pissed off that he lost, like just like attacks the Undertaker after the match and then turns heel then. Oh, that's good. That's a that's a good idea because then you get that heel turn, but also you give the Undertaker his legacy, if you will. I think so. I mean, I, I think fans would be more pissed off if Roman Reigns won than if he attacked Undertaker after the Undertaker Undertaker wins. But I can still see it going either way, but if they do go with this heel turn, they need to like basically like 100% get behind it and not have him be like this acting like a face even though he just beat the Undertaker. I yeah. think if I think 3 years ago when Brock Lesnar won, if Brock Lesnar wasn't like there so frequently, they could have done more with him beating the Undertaker. And they tried to do that. Like, they had Paul Heyman come out and cut all those promos. That it was, like, eat, sleep, like, beat the streak, like, break the streak, all that kind of stuff. If Brock Lesnar had been around more, they probably could have built built him up to be a better heel than... than you see, if you only see Brock Lesnar a few times a year, it doesn't really work. Yeah, Brock Lesnar exists in this, like, weird bubble <laughs> where he essentially is the opposite of whoever he's facing. So, you know, you... you you have him going up against Goldberg now, so he's the heel. But, you know, we had him going up against Seth Rollins before when he was more of a face. So Brock Lesnar can be whatever he needs to be, you know? Um, but I don't think Roman Reigns has that at all. Yeah. I mean, like, he he's doing like, face stuff, but he's, like, still kind of, like, acting heelish. Like, even when he was, like, fighting Rusev back at, like, back last year, Rusev is just, like, talking about how awesome his family is, and Roman Reigns is, like, being a bully, so it's still kind of, like, a heelish thing. Even though he's fighting against the heel at the time. Yeah, Roman Reigns, he, he keeps his, like, feet in both worlds, and it's just, it, it gives us this, this very weird feeling that's kind of, that's hard to internalize. So that's why I think, like, no matter what happens, they need to um, they need to commit, just like you said. They need to commit to one way or the other. And I think, like I said, if he beats The Undertaker, we're going to have to commit to it. And then even if he doesn't beat The Undertaker, I think a good way to do it would be, like, after the match, just, like, beat up The Undertaker and essentially, like, retire The Undertaker just based on him getting, just, like, maybe, like, spear him on the outside of the ring or something like that. Yeah. Slash agree. All right, so moving into our next match, we have Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar for the WWE Universal Championship. So Goldberg won the title from Kevin Owens. Um, I don't, I'm not sure how long the match was because, like, the match was weird. So 
Goldberg comes out, Kevin Owens comes out, and basically just stands on the outside of the ring for a while, gets in the ring, eventually bell rings, Jericho's music hits, um, Kevin Owens gets distracted, gets speared, gets jackhammered, and loses. Yeah. So now you have um, Goldberg going against Brock Lesnar, which since the last match was a squash match or like a pretty fast match, I really hope that this is actually like a full match. I don't know if that's going to happen, but... I don't think it's going to because I've seen a bunch of Goldberg matches. Not I haven't seen all of them, but I've seen a lot of them. And I don't recall ever seeing a, like, a match that I wouldn't consider a squash. Yeah, I think and maybe he, you maybe, you've probably watched more WCW than I have, so maybe you can correct me. The only one that comes to mind is obviously the one where he lost the title, but that was due to interference from Scott Hall, like tasing Goldberg. Um, when he won the title from Hogan, that was a little bit better because the NWO came out and just, like attempted to interfere, and then Diamond Dallas Page and Carl Malone at the time it was like a weird thing, but came out and attacked the NWO, so Goldberg won. That was good because it was like, and that was one of the times WCW should have actually put that match on pay per view and not just gave it away on, on Raw, but or on on Nitro, I mean. But we have a lot of matches here. I just I just hope they get. They, I just hope it's not a squash match because, like they've had this will be their second match under this new run of Goldberg, and I kind of don't want both of them to be essentially the same thing. Yeah, um, I think it's gonna be. You know, listen, I, I would love to. I would love to agree with you. I would love to be able to say that I think this is not going to be a squash, but, you know, I look back at what happened with Dean Ambrose and Brock Lesnar last year at WrestleMania. And that just doesn't give me hope because yeah, that, was, that wasn't exactly a squash, but it was pretty, I mean, it was pretty much one, but it was a little, it was drug out a little bit more than, like a ten yeah, match. Yeah, it, it was it was just a long squash match um, yeah. because nothing overly exciting happened. Um, and just like from watching that, I just don't know what's going to happen because, I mean, the question then is like, what happens with Goldberg? I don't think he has any desire to stick around. Yeah, does but also Brock Lesnar's part time too. So are we yeah. in? Are we going to basically be in the exact situation we were in? in 2004 when it was like tech, like essentially their last matches for pretty much like at that time where the match just is bad because it's like, okay, Goldberg has no desire to stick around Brock Lesnar's part time. So they do, do they just not care and put on a bad match that I, I feel like we might get that. I um, hope not. I would, I would hope at least that they've learned from WrestleMania 20. I think it was 20 where that happened, that that's not a good idea. Um, if anybody, I can, I don't know if, if Goldberg has no desire to stay around. I can see Lesnar like winning the title to maybe drop it within a couple months at like another pay per view, but I don't really know. Yeah, see that, and that's like the weird thing because I don't, I don't see Goldberg doing a match on you know uh, a non top you know one of the main four shows. Um, and I just like I don't know. I feel like Goldberg doesn't really care about the business he doesn't care about wrestling Goldberg cares about the money he cares about his son getting to see him wrestle you know uh once or you know however many times but I I don't think Goldberg cares about the business I think Goldberg thought thought this was a good deal and he was going to make some money because he hasn't been doing much another thing with this match is if Brock Lesnar loses um that pretty much I mean it doesn't make Brock Lesnar look weak but having if it's like if it's a squash match and Lesnar loses, he's lost twice to the same person in like the same circumstances, which would essentially like definitely weaken him a little bit. I think the the loss at Survivor Series was okay because it brought Lesnar down, like brought him down to a level where it's like okay, this guy this guy can be beaten. But then if he gets beaten like twice in the same style, I think it's just gonna be it's just gonna be bad. Yeah, I th and and that's that's one of the problems that I that I had with this match in general is like no matter who wins, it's someone loses. Like if Goldberg wins, okay, then he beat the guy who beat the streak. Who can ostent does does he win and then forfeit the title? I could see that happening. Um, he wins and says, uh, "I've done. I've came here. What I I've done and uh, I've came here and done what I wanted to do." I won the championship. I beat 
the beast incarnate, and now I forfeit the title. I could see that happening, but that sucks. Um, or yeah, does I have no? I mean, I I'm gonna predict for me. I'm gonna predict that Brock Lesnar wins. I don't know. I mean, I would. I think he has more of a desire to stay than Goldberg does. But I know he's also like he he's also part time as well. So even if he has a championship, that's in it's like like when he beat Cena at um, SummerSlam three years ago, where he had the title but he didn't defend it for three months. Yeah. Or was it longer than that? It may no he it was won it at Survivor or SummerSlam defended it against Cena at Survivor Series and then didn't defend it again for like two more months until the Royal Rumble where it was him and Cena and Seth Rollins. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I kind of would rather, I guess, see Goldberg just, like, vacate the title, and then you have a tournament where maybe maybe Finn Balor can come back and get the title. Maybe Seth Rollins can contend for it then. Yeah, well, Finn Balor has been wrestling house shows, so he's yeah, ready so he's to come back. back. So. Um, you know, this is a really good question. I think it could go either way. I think that... I think having Goldberg win and then them doing a tournament makes sense because you have Finn Balor coming back and like if Goldberg wins and he the, he doesn't drop the title, who could beat Goldberg? No one really. He's essentially Superman. If Brock Lesnar wins, well, who can beat Brock Lesnar besides Goldberg? No one, because they're he's like Supergirl, I guess. You know, he they're both Krypton Kryptonian people. So I think this puts them in a weird situation. So I can certainly see Goldberg winning and then dropping the title. Um, and I also think that Goldberg is the type of person that would say, I'll come back, but I'm winning. So I'm going to go with Goldberg. All right, I'll go, I'll go with Brock Lesnar just to maybe have it be a little bit different. I just want to see what they do if they do have Lesnar win. And I'm saying Lesnar just so I hope we get a, di- a different match than the one we had in November. Yeah, for sure. All right, moving into our, I think this is our final match. We have Bray Wyatt, the WWE, I think it's WWE Championship, against Randy Orton. So back last year, um, Randy Orton was in a feud with Bray Wyatt. They feuded for a little bit. Seth Ra- or Orton was injured, like kayfabe injured, I think. Or I think he was injured, but then they made it a foot injury instead of what it like, actually was. Then he came back at the SmackDown I was at. He came back and wrestled. Uh, I think he wrestled Bray Wyatt, and Kane came out, and then I think that SmackDown after that attacked Kane and joined the Wyatt family, and he's since left the Wyatt family. So now he is fighting for the championship that Bray Wyatt has. He burned down the Wyatt compound. So um, the storytelling in this feud has actually been kind of interesting. So it's actually like a story, but um, I definitely see Randy Orton winning. Even though it does cut, I think it's going to cut Bray Wyatt, Bray's, rain down pretty significantly because he got it in like early fit was it like february he's had it for maybe two months yeah um you really think randy orton's gonna win uh i believe probably i mean if, it, if it's going face heavy i'm going to say that but i kind of would rather see bray like keep it because i don't know if like i don't know how much longer randy wants to like work as well he's been there for quite a while just he's been there just as long as cena has yeah um, I could see, I could see Randy winning just because he's the face in the situation, and WrestleMania usually is like, like the like where where like feuds end kind of. So if he wins the title and the feud ends, I could see that happening. I don't know if the feud would end if um, Bray Wyatt retained it though. Yeah. Um, or yeah, they could do know. something different and just have the feud continue. But usually WrestleMania, it's like okay, this feud is over at WrestleMania, and then the the wrestlers involved move on to different stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. First of all, I got to say that like this does not, to me, this is not in any way, shape, or form a WrestleMania main event. Like in no alternate future would I have ever seen this match and be like, yeah, that's going to main event WrestleMania. Just because like Bray Wyatt's fine, I guess. I don't particularly care for him. I like him more I, than I, I like him more now than I than I did initially. I mean, I really liked him at first when he was feuding with Cena, and then after that, he kind of floundered for a long time. Yeah, well, that's what happens when you lose every feud you are ever in. 
yeah. you know, you you lose momentum, and and it's it's not it's not easy to care about someone who Would keeps you say losing. He, I think he won the feud against Dean Ambrose, but it really didn't do anything because Dean Ambrose was just like so over at that point that it didn't really matter. Yeah. Um. So. I don't know, man. For, yeah, like I said, first of all, this doesn't even feel like a WrestleMania main event to me. Um, and I'm not even sure that it will. I can see them slapping the quote-unquote co-main event title on this and then putting Goldberg Lesnar on last. Um, and as far as winners go, I can see them putting the belt on Randy Orton. But if you remember the last time Randy Orton was champion, it was boring as hell. Um you know, because when Randy Orton wants to be good, he can be good. Yeah, but I think when the last he, time he had it, wasn't that before Daniel Bryan won it, I think? Yeah, yeah. He Daniel Bryan beat him or for it at WrestleMania him and Cena, Or him and Cena each had a title. They wrestled each other. I think it was like TLC 2013, I think. And unified and, them. And, yeah, then it got unified into the new belt. The old belt was still being used for some reason at the time. Or I, like, I guess like... you No, they, they were unified, but they were like... They were two individual belts, but they were like the same belt, essentially. Yeah. So he had both of those, and then Daniel Bryan won that. And I think he had that, because Daniel Bryan won it, and then Triple H screwed Daniel Bryan somehow out of something. It got back to Orton. Orton beat Cena to unify the titles, and then or then Daniel Bryan won the title there. Yeah, so um, I just don't know that Randy Orton would give us something good, and I think that... If you have Bray Wyatt, I think there's more interesting opportunities there. Like, you've got Bray Wyatt versus AJ Styles. That would be a pretty good feud. I'd be okay with that. Um, you've got Bray Wyatt versus The Miz. Like, that would be interesting. Um, so I think you can have a lot of interesting feuds coming out of Bray Wyatt winning. So yeah, I, can, I can see it going either way still. I'm probably still going to yeah, go Yeah, it really Orton. could. I like having these split um, predictions sometimes. I know there are some cases where it's like, okay, this person definitely has to win, but like, I like that we can say Orton might win because he's a face, but then you say like, there's better stories coming out of if Bray Wyatt wins, he can go, he can go wrestle AJ, he can go wrestle The Miz, he can wrestle you know whoever. Yeah, so I, I think I'm going to go with Bray Wyatt on this one. All right, I'll go with, uh, with Orton on this one. And it's weird for me to say because I've gotten on this show before and have screamed to the heavens of how much I dislike Bray Wyatt. But honestly, I would rather see Bray Wyatt as champion than Randy Orton. Just because, like, the idea of seeing Randy Orton as champion again just doesn't excite me. Like, there's nothing about that that just makes me want to care. Whereas with Bray Wyatt, like, yeah, I don't really care for him. But it's different, it's fresh, it's new, and I think there's something to be said for that. Especially at this point, where things in the WWE tend to get very samey very quick. Yep. Alright, so I think we've got all our predictions done. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how this WrestleMania like plays out. I'll be, I'll be watching, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to watch it, like, the pre-show or not, because I'll be doing some work stuff. But after that, I'll be probably like, jumping in to see where it's at. Yeah. Um, I don't know what I'm going to be doing, but I'm certainly going to be watching it. All right, cool. So that's going to do it for our predictions. Why don't you tell people about your comic book podcast? All right. If you like pop culture, you like uh, three guys just sitting around Skype and uh, talking nonsense, listen to the comic book show. It's a lot of fun. Uh, on the last episode we did, we talked about the Logan movie. Yeah, so, that movie was awesome. I, liked it. Yeah. I loved it. It was tight. It was fantastic. So if you want to hear three friends talking about uh, how much they loved Logan, go to www.epiccomicshow.com, uh, and you can check out all of our episodes there. You can find them on iTunes, uh, Google Play, wherever you get your podcasts. It's called The Comic Book Show, and it's pretty great. Awesome. My favorite thing to do with Logan is give people spoilers and just be like, spoilers, <laughs> Logan has claws. That's about it. <laughs> That's funny. All right, so we'll be back uh, – in the future, I'm not sure what pay per view is after this. Is it Isn't Extreme it like, Rules or well, did... Battle Battleground? Maybe Battleground or Extreme Rules, because they switched positions. Yeah, or um, it was pay, they they switched something with Payback where it was like Extreme Rules was first, and then it was Payback, and then they made it Payback Extreme Rules. I don't remember exactly which one. And then yeah. Battleground, I think, was in the summer, but they may have moved that as well. 
Yeah, we'll have to check on that. It's, but well, yeah, it's just, totally different now that they've split up the Raw and SmackDown pay-per-view, yeah. so we'll have to see. So, yeah, last year it was still, like, they didn't do the draft yet, so they hadn't done the split pay-per-views. But whichever one comes out next and we feel like uh, predicting, we'll do it on the show. And you can always uh, you can follow Aaron at Aaron Steinberg on Twitter. I'm at Iceworm. We want to thank you for listening, and have a good one. We'll see you next time.